Welcome back to Sarasota, Florida, the Sarasota Polo Club, and the site of the final final of this year's UPA Ultimate Club Championship Series. This is the Open Men's, and uh, it's going to be quite a game. I'm Michael Baccarini. Tina Booth is with me, and we're going to be taking in the action of these great squads. Can you tell us about them, Tina? I sure can, Michael. We're all set for a West Coast Classic matchup. On one side of the bracket, we have the Santa Barbara Condors. They arrived in the finals by eliminating Jam in the semis 15-12. On the other side, we have Vancouver's Furious George. And in one of the best games of the tournament so far, they sent Ring of Fire packing in the semis by a score of 13-12. So these two teams are going to provide some high-level action. A lot of build up to this point, long season. These two teams have been dominating all the major events for the last three years. Condors won the uh, UPA title in 2000, 2001, and then Furious captured it last year, besting Ring in the finals. So now we're going to see how they do head to head here. This ought to be something else. It's the last final of the tournament. The crowd is assembled. They're uh, fired up and excited about the game. Condors will be pulling. They're in the black jerseys. And Furious is wearing their whites. And we're off. Here we go. Furious receiving. Jeff Cruikshank with the disc. Big lefty. And of course, he puts up a big lefty to Mike Grant for the first score of the game to Drew Ludson, number nine. Just like that. One up. Unlike the other finals, this is not a battle to see who's going to go to Finland. Both of these teams will be in Turku, Finland in August of 2004. Santa Barbara will be representing the U.S. and Furious will be representing Canada. So this is not to say the game's not important. It's certainly important for both these teams to test each other against each other. Well, the UPA title is no small reward. I mean, certainly this is a big one to capture. They want it bad. Furious will be pulling upwind. It's a diagonal breeze, a pretty stiff one at that. You gotta power it through. Notice it's staying low. It's hard to get the disc that far down the field in a pull, but they did a pretty good job of it. These guys have strong pulls. So we're seeing some spread out flow offense from the Condors. Furious has a poacher in the middle playing a little junk. Oh, and near a block coming from the backside. No call on that, even though there was definitely contact. James Tudaris with the disc. Launches a big one down the field. Oh! Jumps up high to get the block. Rick Melner for Furious. The defense puts it back in play. Playing a man-to-man, -man, it appears, is Condors, are the Condors. And there's a flick going up high and a uh, defensive play coming in late. Is there a foul called? Nope. Oh, yes, there was a foul called, and it's not contested. Good aggressive defensive play. Milner, who got the block. Milner, pardon me. It's the receiving end of that huck. And we'll now put it in play. Fake on the forehand, a pick quickly called. Okay, Adam Glim is on the mark. As Melner looks to put it in play, we're hearing some discussion about the situation, people pointing out who they're guarding, where they want them to be positioned. Now they're set to go. Disc is checked in. Melner hits the dump. Still in the forehand corner and a quick, uh, but he's open by virtue of a pick. So that'll be coming back. We'll do that one again. So these red zone opportunities upwind are critical. It's hard to get there. Got to convert. The 
Look how close they are in that corner. It looks like it's set up to go away from that corner by how tight they are. I want to maybe get some misdirection. Here it goes, and uh, no continue, but a big break attempted by a lefty. And that was either pushed to the ground by a point block or uh, just too low a release by the, uh, the thrower. So Furious is back on D. John Frames on the mark. I would assume Studaris will pick up the disc. A little bit of a delay of game here. Oh, nice. Looks like Frames asking him to uh, put things in play. Forcing backhand. Definitely a junk D here. Switching up front by the shallow defenders. Okay, we had a quick double team call, I believe, there. No two defenders can be within three meters of the thrower. Only one of them can break that barrier. In this case, it looks to be Evan Wood. Okay, with him on the mark, the other Furious defender has to back out after the double team and across the field. Oh, it hops up over the defender. Furious with a quick snag and a D. They're going to look to get it at this point over with. Pass to the dump. You're hearing the shout of no I.O. They only wanted to go that direction for just such a defensive opportunity. Great effort there by the Furious defender. Oh, we've got a call. I'm going to throw this hammer. Be ready. Ah, and there's the fake and the flick up line, but not enough air under that disc. So Stadaris will put this back in play again. This uh, seems to be an uncharacteristic amount of turnovers for these two teams. We're already at four, and I know both those teams pride on pride themselves on only having four turns in a half or even a whole game. Yep. A game of keep away, this is key. Gotta maintain possession, particularly in the in the wind. Even more so upwind. You can give up possession downwind because you know the other team has to fight so hard to come back. And here, Condors are striking quickly. And a nifty spike. Not much of a reaction by the crowd celebrating a spike. They like the score, though. Tie game at once. Both scores have been downwind so far, Tina. Though Furious had two opportunities there in the red zone, they couldn't convert. So Furious brings in their starting offense. Some of the players on the Furious team, Tina, were on the Canadian junior team over in Heilbronn, Germany. They had a fantastic final. Came up short to the Swedish team, who's very talented, but had a big lead. Two of these players, Oscar Pottinger and Derek Alexander, play an awful lot for this great Furious team. They're both on right now on offense. It's great to see young players playing such a formidable role on such great teams. Ludson with the disc. Furious is gobbling up big chunks of yardage. Lots of constant movement. Always a dump option. Several options in the first four or five seconds of a count. There's a lot of pressure on a thrower, but these guys are finely tuned. Like Joe Montana looking off several options in a matter of seconds and choosing just the right one, hopefully. There's another turn. Great block. Kind of looked more like a coverage sack, really. They didn't have a whole lot going on there and had to throw to the dump, but the dump just wasn't that open. Not good separation. Up the 
field. Oh. Namkin, Mike Namkin, a great defender. Just point block there with a foot block on the, on the mark. Mark Roberts got the block for Furious. And now Crookshank, great lefty dynamite thrower. Lots of movement here, constant motion. Makes it difficult to know which side of your defender, of your receiver to be on when you're defending. Alexander's got the disc. This guy's 20 years old, Tina. Man. Playing a prominent role on, right now, the one of the most dominant teams on our planet. You know how I love the, how the juniors teams are moving Feeding. up to the club. Feeding players to the upper levels, already yeah. seasoned by good direction. And... Ooh, wow. wow. Well, Alexander tried to get that one off. Another point block. The Condors pulled that one back and uh, got another opportunity to get an upwind break here. Starting with a squaring pass across the field. Undercut. Oof. Not a lot of margin for error. Blaine well, macro. Great effort to just get to that. And he's calling it down. I didn't catch it. Good call. You gotta love how quickly these guys settle any arguments and continue playing. Holy oh, cow! Man! Namcom came out of nowhere to get that block. Yeah, he uh he posted off his guy, laid out. I don't even think the receiver saw him coming. He landed hard. Wow, what an effort. Seems to me when you're when you're moving like that and the disc is in the end zone, all bets are off. Don't worry about who your, your receiver is. If you can make a play on the disc, there is no next pass. Go get it. And boy did he go. Well, that was that was shoulder high block. Came kind of spiking down on his head and left shoulder though. That had to be painful. It seems to be showing no ill effects so far, though. All right, so Condors with the disc again. Working the forehand sideline. Wow, another great effort. Oscar, Oscar and then now it goes up, and the trailing edge effort there by the Condor player, and just beyond his reach. Wow, phenomenal. Good upwind put, Tina. Yeah, it's a difficult catch to make. I think the... Uh Throw ahead a little bit too much adrenaline going through his veins and just put it out there a little bit too far. Magnificent effort, though. So from end to end, here we go. A few passes to get there. These boys can really crank it. That wind is not nearly as much a factor, although did you see how the disc tailed off to the right? It could, didn't have enough power to keep holding that line upwind. Alexander has it. High release backhand to Mike Grant. Slight break. Okay, they're still in just outside their end zone, about 15 yards. Drew Ludson is looking, pivoting back and forth. Sends a backhand up the line, knowing the wind's gonna bring that back in, but oh, just not quite enough touch. Looking for Mike Grant for a big gainer. You'll hear a lot of Mike Grant, I, I have to assume, in this, in this game. He's a, a lot of people seem to figure one of the best players around. He's got a complete game, Tina. Isn't he nursing some kind of injury? Oh, yesterday in the semis, he had a spectacular high-flying dive for a big huck and tried to catch the trailing edge of a disc and just at the last second came down and sort of on his elbow and subluxed his shoulder, slightly dislocated it appeared, but was able to play. It didn't come out of, out of joint. Well, here's another big one. Uh, Crookshank's in position for that. Some contact, but no call. Good, clean, hard effort. That was anybody's disc. That was not meant to be caught by the receiver when it's hanging like that. And Ludson with the disc. Grant's got it. Pivots back to the backhand, sends it to the middle. Oh, and Namkung launches again. 
they're discussing it. He got a piece of that disc, but did he get body first? I think that's gonna be the discussion here. Mark Roberts on the receiving end of that Mike Grant pass. Looks like they're already just going directly to the observer. Mike Grant. With a bit of a chuckle, is going, all right, let's settle this, fellas. I want to play. Hey, Don. Okay. He's going back to uh, Roberts. It was ruled that that was a foul. Seems they agree or agreed to disagree, and they're going to play on. Back in play. A lot different from the Masters final. We might have had a three- or four-minute argument there. Are you trying to uh, win an understatement contest, Michael? Because you just won. <laughs> Alexander squirts up line. Ludson finds him. There's a skinny lane there we're working with. Alexander's got to be looking to get it off the line. And he does. Wow, across the mark with a backhand. And again to Grant. Good use of the field. Trying to square passes to give themselves more room to work with. And there's a great laying bid by yet again Mike Nampton. What a stellar defensive effort on that point. But Mark Roberts reels it in. It was again another high turnover point. There were eight turnovers, and with a score two to one, there have been 12 turns so far in this game. Not an impressive number for the stat freaks out there. Well, if you're a stat freak. Like yeah. you. I'm a stat freak, but uh, I'm an action freak. That was that was some pretty stellar action there. Some great efforts on both offense and defense. Some big shots taken, but these guys are also feeling out the wind. They're going to spend the first few points here finding out what they can do and can't do. And uh, I'm sure we'll see the turnover total diminish. So now the Condors set to receive with their starting offense. The Condors still at this point, something they're known for it. They don't call subs. They self-sub. Nobody discusses it. They just sort of go on when it's their time to go on the field. And I guess you kind of just feel the moment. Studaris is always on, though. Well, and look at that, a huck. There it goes, the distance. Can somebody run fast enough to run this down? No. It's actually a re-pull. Had you go in there. Come on, team. Yeah, Work had with me. No Work with me. No idea what they were going to do. <laughs> so it looks like Flo, the, the observer there, raised a hand and uh, nope, no hand raised there. That's a clean pull, and this one will be fielded by the Condors. And yeah, get, this one lands on the line, slightly out of bounds, as you see the observer indicate. And getting back to what you said, Michael, about the Condors calling their own subs, or they just sub organically. I just think that's a marvelous tribute to uh, how well know they, they know each other and how egoless you have to be in order to know when to take yourself out. I bet there's plenty of ego on that team, but uh, I think they can put it aside for, for that function to work enough. Uh, they know who their players are. They know who should be on the field in the right situations. There's another point block. This one might be a foul, though. Yep. Coming back, and notice their spread set up here. Playing with two lateral dumps. Sort of a horizontal stack downfield, keeping things well spread out. Constant motion. Multiple options for the thrower. He's looking dump. Doesn't have dump. Throws a flat, sort of inside-out throw to break the mark. Really sort of a flat forehand. Sort of a misnomer, the inside-out people refer to I.O. and ultimate or the inside out forehand or backhand doesn't necessarily have to go to the break side or be tilted like a classic inside out throw that was just a flat forehand but it got, his receiver was heading to the break side now that's a bending flick to the break side and outside in look at this motion it's an easy score to Brandon Steets tie game it twos with some nice flow I'm amazed at how much all of them keep moving. Andy Cruz had both of the Condors assist in this game so far. Well, that's Steet's first goal. He's a hard-working athlete. Looks like he's uh, been working on those sideburns like Butch <laughs> Brown was on the uh, refugees, too. 
Michael, are you going to come in on the facial hair of all the male players throughout the tournament? I don't know. Being somebody who sports some facial hair at times myself, it seems like a, a trend in the game to have some creative facial hair structures. Or we're just begging for major sponsorship from Gillette. Hey, that's a good idea. Okay, that pull sails out of bounds, so that'll be a brick. Now that's one pull where you're, the pulling team may have been off sides, but you don't want to call it on that. That's heading out of bounds, and you're going to get it at the brick mark, 20 yards upfield. Okay, Alexander has it. Whoa, a quick pop-up sort of push pass, high release, hoity-toity kind of thing, and uh, Ludson somehow pulls it down with a defender draped all over him. Mike Grant with big wide pivoting. He's such a flexible player. He scooted on his pivot foot a little bit there. It's going to be tough to toe the line, but they do. Mark Roberts reels it in. Furious is up 3-2. It's Mike Grant's second assist and Mark Roberts' second goal. These guys are flowing fabulously. And this goal happened in a hurry. It started with uh, a sort of sketchy but about the only choice that Derek Alexander had, and boom, 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 down the field. Mike Grant puts up the big one. The wind was helping that throw, and he gave it just the right edge to hold the line. Just inside the line, Mark Roberts caught it with a few yards to spare. It's a beauty. There has yet to be an upwind break, Tina. Now these teams are clearly evenly matched, and uh, perhaps that's my entry into the understatement contest. All right, we're even. All right, Mr. Fender, not to be confused, not Freddy Fender, it's his flow Fender. He's from Berlin, Germany. He's one of the top observers here. He's in position here to uh, call the offsides. Keep an eye on him as the puller pulls. Nope, no hand going up. Of course, we couldn't quite see him from our angle. Clean pull, it looks, and... Sidaris puts it in play to Dugan, who appears. Steve Dugan, a fine player, so tough to guard. Playing way off these fellas. Defender out, sort of poaching off the deep man. He's going to have to recenter himself. They're doing a switching, adding a switching component to the D here. Playing man, but having a deep poach and. Well, it's more of a clam, I guess, Tina. Yeah. And there's a block. Will this be our first break of the game? Here's inside out. In the middle of the field, just outside the red zone. Got about 10 or so yards more to go to get there. Getting close. A good position on the field, right in the middle. Horizontal stacking. Dugan is a big layout block. Looks like he was on the arm of the furious player. Michael Enns, number 10, he's got it. Gonna put it back in play. He's offering a disc with his left hand. He's gonna pull it away and stick it in his right. He's got a forehand grip quickly. That's the four side. Ooh, and we had a catchable disc right there. It was dropped, unforced. Studars throws a hammer across the field. Nice soft touch and a big put. And there we go. Condors hold the downwinder. We're tied at threes. This is JD's second goal. And I just have to say that I'm going to show that footage over because I love that placement of that huck. They didn't try to throw it in the same third of the field. Threw it flat. The receiver ran right to it. Defender didn't have a chance. It's one of the things I try to teach my kids all the time. Well placed. Well, Furious had a chance. They were approaching the red zone and couldn't quite punch it in again. They've had the two upwind opportunities, more than two, but two points where they've had opportunities to get the upwind break. We haven't seen one yet. So Furious receiving, coming downwind again. Brookshanks, lefty, fabulous thrower to Oscar, back to Grant. 
Mike Grant can get around almost any mark, especially with that around backhand. It's just off in a hurry. Gets there so fast. It's very quick. Great reach. Okay, Crookshank hits the squaring swing, dump on to Grant. Good movement here. Out in front of Ludson. Can you reel it in? He oh. does. Great catch. Great put. It's 4 3 Furious. It's Mike Grant's third assist of the game and Drew's second goal. Nice play. We're going to be hearing a lot of the same names from these teams when they're on offense. Most of the teams at this level. Uh, have a small rotation on offense. They'll be starting the same seven, eight, nine, the most ten players on offense. And uh, so they get a lot of the action. The rest of the guys are mostly defensive players, and you just keep bringing those guys in to, you know, give you strong legs over and over and over and wear down the opposing team's few offensive players. But uh, they're so efficient, they can stay on the field. They're supposed to score, and they often do at this level. So. We're going to be hearing a lot of those names over and over. Let's see whose names we hear from the Condor side as they're receiving here. Sudaris, that's the first pass from Adam Glim. Out to the side. All right, they've spread things out. They're working the flick side here. Sort of a flat mark. Again, a cut back in from Dugan. He gets fouled on the mark. Steve Dugan gets down low and has his strong releases. He lets a strong one go here. Too strong. Intended receiver was, well, one of those two guys. Brandon Steets, one of them. They're running able to reel it in. Looks like they're setting a zone. Looks conventional zone. There's a three-person cup approaching. As Furious is setting up here, Tina. Yes, the first... Uh our first look at some conventional zone defense. Thanks, Andre. Sidaris on the mark. I'm interested to see how exactly they're going to work it through. That's how they're going to do it. Oh, going over the top. All right. That quickly, that point came to a uh, screeching halt for Furious. They got in the D, now they're going to have to do it again. Had him on the mark. Stadaris, big fake, gets off the inside out flick. I should say the break mark flick. Glenn's got it. Oh, that's Melner, pardon me. Rick Melner, double zero. This cup is a four-person cup, but it's sort of shading toward the backhand side, it appears. Fluidly moving around, though, and stepping in, taking away would-be poppers and dumps. Big swing pass. Nice through pass, and continuing on. Keeping it moving. Don't want that cup to set. Through the cup nicely and continuing beyond. That's great work against the zone. And out in front where only a receiver is going to reel it in. Or is a defender in time? He is. Great defense. I thought that was a point. It's like uh, that was Tommy Burfine. That was some nice movement through the cup. Quick, quick throws. Cup couldn't reset. But their deep, deep has some serious wheels. And some height at six foot six. Okay, you notice after that block, he did not pick up the disc. He could have quickly picked it up or been the one to start the offense. But with this structure in a horizontal stack, two lateral dumps, three actually. Sort of like a German German offense from a couple years back. Several lateral dumps and then isolated downfield cutters coming back in and cutting away. They have it set up again. Looks like Sudaris has the disc again, and he's in a good position in the middle third. It's a good place to operate from. Cutter coming back in, but he chooses the deep look. Look at that put, and almost just beyond the outstretched 
hand of Burfind. Up, oh, low pass, and then a nice break. Continue flick. Not too much of a break. Holding the same line. Now open side flow. Cigars is applying the pressure with that right hand kind of on the back of the thrower. It's so interesting. There's a refined from end to end again. Stepping up to get the block. He didn't have to go up too high to get that one. Came right back into his, his reach. You got a lot of reach when you're six foot six. There's room for lots of short, quick, powerful, explosive cutters in this game, but we're seeing a lot more of towering players. Probably have some basketball background. Maybe some tight ends in college football. Good in the air to have. It's great to have those big fellas. Here goes a big throw. Toe to toe. Oh, and Steets is deed. He called a foul or a strip. Yep, he's saying he was. He was touched here. Michael Lands got the block. I'm not sure the crowd is crazy about that. Well, they might be crazy about it, but not in the way Steets is. He thinks he was fouled, and he's trying to discuss it. Defender was definitely coming from behind. And as he comes from behind, you, you've got to launch past the receiver without touching him in order to get that disc. You've got to get all disc. Steets may have even had it in his hand. Well, it looks like they've settled it, though. If it had been in his hand and then knocked out, it had been a strip. But he, it looked like he was saying he hit my arm. But looks like the observers either help with a decision or let's give the fellas credit. Steets and Enns settled it and uh, are playing on. With the, Successful D by Furious. Got a long way to go. They're about three yards deep in their end zone. Not just looking at the Condor D, but that wind as well. You know, I think, Michael, that you know, they've had to adjust to the wind all week, but they're still a little uh, trigger happy. It seems like they're definitely taking their shots downwind, and those seem understandable. The upwind shots seem to be holding in the wind and they're just turning into jump balls and you know, Burfind is down there. It's kind of tough to complete it over him. Remember this is Furious, is, this is their defensive team. So you're saying they uh, don't have throws, Michael? No. Not saying that, but it looks like they don't have their tallest defenders in either. So uh, they're probably thinking downwind puts are more about staying with your receiver. You know, you can run with them. You got the speed heights a little bit negated because the disc isn't hanging. But upwind, they don't seem to pull down those hanging ones. They haven't got the height to contend with Burfind and Husak, and those guys are they're going up big. I'm not sure the discussion here is there a foul and placement of players is being situated. Here we go. Melner has it. It's sort of a lateral, slightly diagonal dump. Back to Melner. These guys are working it back and forth, hoping to crack the code of this Condor's Cup. Sort of a clamish zone. That's really a three-person cup, Tina. Dugan appears to be short deep. Pretty conventional, now that you look at it. Okay, there's a dump back to Melner. And a nice pop through, continuing on. Good fake to continue. It's okay to go backwards there. You've got good separation, and uh, the cup has been stretched out. Now as they inch their way back in, we've got a furious timeout called by number 12, Al Nichols. Good time for a timeout, Tina. Yeah, they had seven turnovers so far on this point. They need to settle down. They you know, really remind me of any team that can't quite get through the zone. Way too many turns for teams of this caliber. But then add to that the wind. That's certainly adding to the pressure of the point. 
And having to work against that is like an extra defender. Okay, the timeout is over and uh, we're ready to get things underway. Nichols is in possession of the disc with Brandon Steets on the mark. Had a great career at UC Santa Barbara as a college player. Back to Melner. Lots of big fakes, but you have to respect these guys' fakes, even if it's an unlikely throw in a situation. Well, these guys will throw that throw. All right, we're working the disc back and forth, looking for a, a weakness. Nice catch, having to go up high, up line. Good continuing on, John Frame. Gets it up and another pass for the score. With some quick action. Five three condors. And again, they work it up that sideline, but it's so quick. There's no hesitation, it's not jammed, and the defense is scrambling to catch up. You know, great teams work really hard on that timing. To get flow to occur like that takes a lot of practice and dedication. And uh, it's not just timing your cut, it's thinking ahead of that, a pass, two passes ahead. What do I have to do to set up the next cut two passes from now? That might take you someplace where you don't think you're very useful in the moment, but one pass goes up, boom, suddenly you are, you've had your, uh, set your defender up and now you're in position. You're entering the lane where the disc is moving and continuation occurs and it's a thing of beauty when it works like that one. All right. We finally had our first upwind break. I guess we should certainly... That's worth noting, Tina. Yeah. Furious has got to be feeling good about that. Now again, this is not purely upwind, but it's tricky. It's, it's going from left to right as you're viewing this game from our vantage point here, Tina. But from where the pull is going up here, it's still sort of going diagonally down to the other end zone. It's pretty much an upwind goal to score as Furious just did but it, that's the wind's direction the way that disc was flying it's difficult to throw a flick going this way across the field notice that it's held up a few of the condors and Furious's throws Melner will be on the mark guarding Stadaris he'll have to place a foot right on the cone here as the disc went out of bounds landed in and then scooted out of bounds in the sideline quickly gets it moving they're willing to have cutters really close to the, the disc, which used to be taboo. Now, whoa, great effort, but that was behind the receiver. Just to get a hand on that was something else. Quickly, Grant picks it up, and they look to be going for the jugular as quick as possible. These guys seem to be enjoying each other and the good hard play. Grant, two fakes, three fakes, pivoting, fourth. And then gets off a simple backhand. Faking and pivoting and moving your marker around, that really helps. Not just to get your marker off you, but to set up your cutters downfield for effective movement. You know, it's tough to teach pivoting well because a lot of times when I teach it, they move into this like frenetic pivoting where they have no idea where they are on the field or where the def defenders, I mean receivers are. Yeah, they're not, they're not pivoting with a purpose at all. They're just pivoting for the sake of doing it because it looks cool or they can or they're told to use it. But these guys are very purposeful in their in their use of it. So there's no pivot yet, there's just some pump fakes. It's all he needed. He had the open side, as does Grant, but Grant has both sides as open since he can reach like that. Fires a break mark backhand around, but it looks like it's coming back. Furious is still celebrating, but here it comes. Travel I call? Think, I assume a travel call. It'd be the safe call here. Could have been a pick. Grant will have it again. Now he's nursing that shoulder. I believe it was his left hand, his left arm. He landed very hard in the semis yesterday in a spectacular play. He was on the ground for several minutes, writhing in obvious pain. But he got up to come back in that game, and he's playing hard in this one, but he definitely seems to be favoring that shoulder. He's keeping it close to his body when he runs, and it's probably slowing him down a step or so, but a step off Mike Grant is still pretty fast. Yeah, we should all be so injured. <laughs> or so fast. Yeah. 
So it's going to go back to Grant. Although the pick appeared maybe to have occurred after he let go of the disc to uh, Adam, number 16, I'm curious. Um, yeah, Dugan saying, bring it over here. He had it, and he's the one who threw it to Enns, Michael Enns, number 10. So uh, Enns just threw it back to the wrong guy. Okay, here we are. We're set. Dugan sor helped sort that out. Staying a couple steps back off, off the fierce thrower, and that gives him more lateral power on the on the mark, but these guys are staying a half step back, step back off on the mark. But downfield, they got to play tight. Can't give the cushion downfield. Forehand. Ooh, we had some contact. May have been a an offensive foul, perhaps called there. I think they got tangled up. Their feet. Appeared to get tangled up there at the goal line. Notice his cut was sort of a flat cut, a parallel to the side, uh, to the uh, end zone line, and to the line the cutter was throwing on. It's sometimes a difficult pass to complete, particularly in this wind. But these guys have uh, got much deeper throwing arsenals than you know the novice and beginning player, and some of the best throwers that this level even. Okay, as Lebu and Enns work it out, they decide to send it back. Okay, Liburd put it in play and gets the pass off. Just outside the goal, but successfully, Al Nichols puts it to Mike Grant for the score. Makes it 6 3, furious. So, another downwinder, hard fought point. And I like how uh, when they were trapped in that corner, Furious sends one quick cutter to the easy throw that most novices want to play, and then they're out. And it's really pretty much a decoy cut. And then he hits Mike, uh, a little arcing blade in the back of the end zone. Nice patience. Okay, Furious will be pulling up wind yet again. A hanging pull. And it's going to stay in bounds. It's a good pull. Almost to the goal line. It's a long way up in there. All right, Husak. It's a long. Flat flick. Stadaris has it. Surveying his possibilities. Gets it to Steets. Puts up a continue. And they're getting good flow here. Staying wide. Separation well. That was stolen from his own teammate. Is that Namkin with the catch? Oh. Did he hang on? I guess... I guess he hung on. There's no call here, but he's getting up holding his thumb like he, uh, his thumb was bothering him from the, the dive earlier on Steets. Yep, he's definitely holding that hand and nursing that thumb like he may have jammed it, but he made the catch successfully and then maybe dropped it after he uh, realized he'd hurt his thumb again. That makes the score 6-4, furious. Two point lead for Furious, nothing to get comfortable about. So Greg Husak will be pulling up win. And Furious is starting offense is back in. Thank you. Have someone catch the pull, probably feed it to Crookshank so that he can get a deep look right off the bat. Look at that pull. Good grief. Good hang time. Yard deep. Oh, they hit Derek Alexander. 
hits Grant. Grant's good with the disc, as is Alexander, a young player. He's, just, he's a quick cutter. He's hard to stop. If he wants to get it up near the thrower, he's going to get separation in a hurry. Continuing on, Grant lets one go around the mark, out in front of everybody to Ludson. Nice per put. Perfect placement. Furious picks up uh, another point, 7-4. Game will be played to 17, half will be at 9. If I'm not mistaken, Tina, that's the third connection between uh, Mike Grant and Andrew Ludson. Notice the line he took in receiving that was he stayed off the line. He realized that disc was going to turn over and the wind was going to help it sail. He needed to read that and stay in the middle of the field and let the disc come to him. A lot of teams are having a hard time figuring out the wind. These teams, of course, maybe did better knowing that to begin with, but they've also had more looks since they're playing deeper into the tournament. The wind's been consistent throughout the tournament, throughout tournament play. Okay, Burfine with the disc. Looking for anything. There's not a whole lot happening. Mabu is uh, not happy about the, about the play. <laughs> He's talking to the poacher that perhaps uh, endangered him a bit. Okay. The defender's explaining it to... To JD and he's realizing, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, good aggressive play, no harm meant. Gets a flick off quickly to get it moving. Dugan gets separation, forcing backhand here on that last mark, but actually back to the fl flick side. It seems, uh, well, oh, there's a run through the thrower by the defender. Crafty veteran move. It was kind of ran too close by a, a very shallow and tight cutting dump cutter. Kind of ran the defender right in JD's arm. I mean, it's hard to get a throw off there. Kind of defending your own thrower when you run them that close. Especially when they come from behind. You don't see it coming when you're the thrower. Wow, from his knees, he gets it off. Steets has it. Nice from low to high. Break mark, getting it going. Step around backhand offered, but nope. And a flat flick, breaking the mark. Steeds gets it off quickly. Notice they don't want to hang on to it, let their mark set. So Studaris catches that score. Makes it 7-5, Furious. Uh, James Studaris sent me uh, his book this summer, and I'd heard it was coming out, and it was such a pleasure to receive it in the mail as a surprise. It's called Fundamentals of Ultimate. He self-published it, and I give him, uh, as the kids would say, mad props for getting that all down on uh, paper. It's a lot of work, isn't it, Tina? Yeah, Michael, we know all too well as we move into our shameless plug that we're working on our book. Uh, it's going to be coming out in the winter of 05. It's called Essential Ultimate, uh, a guide to the sport for players, coaches, and teachers. And right now, we're struggling with it. it. Took me four and a half hours the other day to write how to throw a flat backhand, so. Yeah, it seems to be an easy thing to show someone when you're there with them, but to get it on paper, with diagrams, with words. Uh, a lot of props, as you say, to Sidaris for getting his self-published book out. It's a great effort. It's dynamite to have uh, more resources like his, and ours will be coming out. Human Kinetics, our publisher, is just fantastic to work with, and there'll be more. It's about time that there's ultimate resources out there for players of all levels, beginner all the way up, and, and their parents, coaches, athletic directors, phys ed teachers. People are excited about learning this game. Well, here we go. Dugan's going to try again. There was an offside call on the Condor's last pull. That's a great pull. Hang time, about as deep as you can get it. Fighting that breeze. Crookshank brings it down, showing that lefty hammer. Sends it across them. Is that Milner? Is he back to Crookshank? And we've got a uh, very flat, spread out defense here. 
Lexington with it. Crookshank shows that hammer option. I'm not so sure the Condors are fearing it a whole lot, but I know it's a possibility. Well, great layout bid on a flat swing pass. A squaring pass can be dangerous, Tina, but it's very essential. You've got to do it. And Crookshank gives that inside out edge. Is the wind going to keep it up? No. That inside, inside out edge needed more height because the wind was going to push it down for certain. That was the first turn and the last four points. These teams have obviously settled down. Uh, they're playing the caliber of ultimate they know they can play. And it's just much more enjoyable. The other thing I really like about all these teams and all these skilled players is you're really not seeing a lot of high-release junky throws. You know, they have uh, tremendous fundamentals and know that they have to get down low. Okay, Savage on the mark. Dugan gets it off. Low release from low to high. That's a great skill to, to learn this game, especially in win play. Can't just have the old usual flat releases. Oh, foul on Alexander on the mark there. You've got to be able to release with power, a lot of spin, a lot of torque and velocity, but from a low to high. You lunge down low, reach, sometimes letting that disc go from, well, like that, about knee high. Even the most throws seem to be just that. See, he's shin high with that release, but getting down to the ankles, that's a big weapon. It's hard to stop and get that low on the mark. You make the move first on offense, and it's a little easier to do. Dugan's working hard. He's got the disc. He's got Savage on him. Ooh, it looks like a piece, maybe, on that throw or the mark. That was a great effort. Just to be a factor, and it's a good time to call a timeout. Very close to the red zone. A little close to the sideline, perhaps, but good time as any. Condors need this upwind goal. 7-5. They'd love to be able to put it in and be coming back, pulling downwind. Yep, the difference in the game is Furious' is one upwind break. Do you think uh, Furious is going to stay in man? Are they going to try to change up the D to change up uh, Condor's my offensive suspicion. plan? Well, my suspicion here, Tina, I think what I might do come out with trap this sideline since they called the timeout so close to it. It's a good place. They set themselves in a situation where advantageous to the D, one thing they can do here is start out trapping them to the backhand side, keep them on that line, and if they're going to break, they're going to have to break backwards. Hope to get it around. If they try to throw in a round flick with an outside edge up, that thing's just going to get eaten up by this wind. It's going to be deable. I'd trap here. Let's see what they try and keep it man with that trap. Okay. The mark is not set. The offense is setting with a, a square dump, about 10, 12 yards offline. Okay, a decoy cut to keep Grant out of the play. And he's looking to get it off the line and throws that swing pass that can be dangerous, but he got it off well set up there. Great right, Michael. But they're keeping him in the backhand force. So he may as well keep it. Dugan works hard, gets it off, and a quick release for his third point of contact. If it's not, there'd be a travel call. And with a travel call, you're allowed two points of contact when you're running and receiving it. If you toss it before putting the third foot down, it's a legal throw, and that indeed was the decision here. If they went to the observer or worked it out between them and ruled that uh, Dugan got it off before the third point of contact. That brings the score up to 7-6. Really important goal for Condors. Lots of nice patience. I like how they use the entire field. And, you know, they got off that, uh, that, that trap. And to be able to score a point coming off a timeout is what every team wants. So, the upwind break they needed. Okay, so Husak uh, will be pulling again. Condors come in with their defensive squad. 
Well, they seem to go with some, a lot of height on their defensive squad, but this is the uh, first time in a while, the whole game actually, that uh, Furious has had their starting offense going upwind. Let's see if they match some height since they're on offense here. Okay, I, uh, I'm going to call for a little bit of junk from the Condors. Some junk D of some sort. They've been showing us a couple different looks from a conventional zone to a poachy clam-like sort of uh, setup. And they've been effective with it. Okay, the game has cleaned up. We've had very few turns in the last several points. These teams are heating up. Tight game. This is great action. Okay, they're waiting for a hand. Usak gets it. Let's it go. Very high pull with the outside edge up a bit, a bit too much perhaps, as it sails out of bounds. So that'll come to the brick for Furious. That helps. Start in the middle of the field, 20 yards up. You know, we have a call uh, when we're coming down on junk that if, if the throw goes out of bounds that we usually abandon it. Why is that, Tina? Because it's just too much of an advantage to the offense. You know, if we're going to play junk, I want them to be in, you know, on a sideline, in a corner. Or well, deep in their end zone, right? Or deep in their end zone. Kuchank gets the big lefty backhand off. Oh, a double move by Grant. Oh, I'm not sure that that was supposed to go to the receiver, but Grant's breaking deep, trying to set his man up, cutting laterally. And a high-release scuba. That was... That was nifty. Kirk Savage has that throw, and well, there's Grant trying to break around with the backhand, but great marking, forced it wide. Yeah, Savage has that high-release scuba. It's, it's a great throw. I shouldn't be so surprised when I see that. But that was upwind, crosswind somewhat. That's a tough one to keep that line. Okay, the Condors have it in a tough spot, but they get it off. Steets has it. The defender on his back. All right. Got it. Good back across the field. Oh, unfortunately, misconnecting with Namkung. But that was good flow. You want to keep it going. You want to get off the line. Use the whole field. Reversing the field in this sport. Look at that. The place, that placement was fabulous. Is it going to hold? Is there a call? That makes it 8-6 Furious. One point for them to take the half. Another thing that I uh, struggle with my team is that they never like to use the back of the end zone. The end zone might as well be five yards deep because that's where they want to score all the time. And I'm constantly telling them, telling them to go the middle back. Now, when you're in the front, you know, and laterally cutting, we saw a lateral cut earlier from a furious receiver, and it was. You know, somewhat contested by the defender, it was a stumbling, get tangled up. Uh, lateral cuts are not always a great idea, at least for newer players, but you know, these guys know what they can do, and sometimes they have to take what the defense gives them, and it might even be a lateral cut. But that one was beautifully set up, thrown to space, and the receiver was cutting from shallow away, and great put. Okay, Furious getting another upwind break. We've only had three. Another pull out of bounds. It seems like kind of lost their angle on these pulls this direction. This is a real advantage to be pulling this way. You want that pull to be in bounds. You don't want to give them 20 yards upfield in the middle. I know it's harder to do it than it looks, you know. Well, I have to say at this point, after watching all four finals, that that's the corner of death. Over and over and over, it's been uh, turned over throughout this uh, weekend. And the pulls have been sailing sometimes well out of bounds. Okay. Kendall's have it. Stadaris is looking. A little shuffle up by Seth Dugan. Sending a long one to a wide open receiver, Steets. And they crumbled from their jump to man. And a put out in front there, just like we talked about. Beyond the defender. If you get good spacing and keep all of your other receivers out of the way, there's room to get that pass off. The help can't come soon enough. They couldn't there. 
Because the Condors are not going to let Furious just take the half. It's now 8-7 Furious. They, uh, they look the best they've looked all game. End of this first half, they're much crisper with their throws. And uh, we're looking for a battle for who's going to take the half. That's Brandon Steed's second assist. See the receiver milked it inbound, I mean into the end zone. It was coming over the defender. He knew nobody was behind him, or he trusted they weren't, and uh, waited to the last minute. So he milked it into the end zone and uh, made the reception for the score. Now, Usak again pulling, trying to keep this one in. Much closer. And I still maintain the corner of death. Yeah, it seems like letting that disc go, aiming more to the other back cone, take a little something off it, maybe give it that same edge, outside edge up a bit, and let the wind guide it, but keep it inbounds, and uh, you could pin him perhaps in that corner. It's going to land and skid for a while anyway, so you want to keep it in. I think in the second half we'll probably see these teams say we've got to keep our downwind pulls inbounds. So they're already at the 20-yard line, and with Crookshank, even with the wind, he can, he can go the distance from there. Hits Alexander. So his shoulder fakes are tough to read what he's going to do with them. They're believable. Kuchenk has it and does indeed take a shot. There's some help getting there a little late. And the big score. Nemkin valiantly tries to get it from Kirk Savage, but nope. Or is yeah. that? That's Mark Roberts, pardon me, on the reception. Michael, you were right. Get it to Crookshank. He's going to place it. Beautiful throw right out in front of him. Furious takes a half, 9-7. So in that first half, for Furious, Mike Grant with four assists and a goal. Mark Roberts and Drew Lugsden, three goals apiece. Condors, Brandon Steets stepped up, two assists and a goal. Andy Cruz, two assists. J.D. LeBeau, two goals. And Mike Namkung. One goal and some spectacular defense, particularly that one in the back of the end zone, downwind, coming to save the point out of nowhere to get a big, huge layout block. So for the second half, Tino, what changes do you think you might see from these teams? Well, if you, if you are furious, you need to not get too happy about a two-point lead. So we all know two-point lead at half means nothing. Um, my guess is they're talking about valuing the disc more, cutting harder, bringing in um, fresh legs on defense. And for the Condors, they, they pretty much need the same thing. I don't think they should worry about getting out of the hole. They, again, need to reduce the game to single cuts, possessing the disc, and not turning it over. I think we'll see more junk D. Spread out defensive looks from them. I think it's a possibility. I mean, whatever they're going to play, it's going to be incredibly hard running. And again, I think that both teams know that they can run harder. It's the second half, and they're going to put it all out in the field. Indeed they will. So that'll be exciting. Last half of play here at the UPA Championships of any of the divisions. They mix up the order each year this year with the Masters of course being the only final on Saturday then we had the mixed division final this morning followed by the women's division final and now the open division so we'll see what this final half of play brings to us that'll be exciting okay with whatever adjustments they've made we will indeed see some hard, hard running here. A lot of focus. Everybody's regrouped. You know the sidelines for each team are going to be huge. They always are. The best teams get here by great team play. Okay, furious to pull to open the second half. The all-important opening point of the second half. Let's see who gets it. Nice high-hanging pull. Helix is back. Great hang time. The mark is on him when he's picking it up. Stadaris is looking 
Got isolated cutters downfield. Oh, Steets has an unforced drop. He's really disappointing himself for that. Al Nichols picks up. A flattish flick force. Oh, Namkin right on his nose. Dugan, pardon me, right on. And his tail comes back to the middle to Melner. Melner's looking, pivoting. Doesn't have much, needs something, anything. Inside out dump, backhand dump. Trying to bend it around a well positioned defender, and it just was not going to be a reception. Oh, he looks like uh, Sidaris was stalled, perhaps? Not Sidaris, pardon me. Melner was stalled by Studaris. So as the Condors step up, Dugan's going to take the disc. He's got Evan Wood marking him. And a flat mark. Milner waving his arms on Studaris. Studaris reaches around. Steets rips it down with the defender right on his back. Okay, Adam Glim makes a reception. There's a call. I think we're thinking there was a pick call, perhaps. It was in the air. No, the ruling is that it was not. Well, there's discussion. Now there's a foul call. Okay, and the observers is going to sent to the observers, and uh, he sent it to the receiver, claiming no foul. Play on. Okay, the repositioning before the play occurred. It's supposed to go back to where you were at the point of the call. It's hard to have an exact science about that. Where were you? Well, I think I was around here, and sometimes you hope people don't take advantage of that situation and get in an advantageous position by continuing to run after the call or not go fully back to where they should. But you got to help them sometimes, and the two teams work it out. They're happy with the setup, and it's continuing on. Back to Sidaris on the backhand sideline. He throws a nice break. Mark Flick, but it's leading a bit much. Ooh, a bit dangerous. Yeah, a bit dangerous, but that's a sweet inside out down the line. They break. Everybody breaks Mark at this level. Makes it 9 8 Furious. Conjures get the first point of the second half. Again, a downwinder. Okay, we're set to start the next point. 9-8, Furious. Condors held serve there on the reception with the wind at their back. Furious was unable to get the upwind break to start the second half. We'll see if the Condors can get the upwind break to tie the game. Husak set to pull. Furious's offense focused and ready to start up the action. Towering pull. Crosswind is going to keep it in bounds, but just barely. Good hang time. Alexander puts it in play. He gets it off the line immediately. Very smart start. Lugston in the middle. Big cross field shot to the break side, but couldn't connect. No foul called. Condors have it. Lugson trying to get it back. A shot up the line. He got some converging on the disc, and the receiver pulls it down. So the Condors indeed do get the upwinder to tie the game. It's, not, it's tied at nines. They come out of the half strong. Two quick goals. That was a great grab. Taylor Casino at six foot went up high for that one. As two furious defenders converged, they couldn't get there quick enough. Take to the air soon enough to pull that away. It's the break they wanted. Now Dugan's going to pull, and they probably have a fairly tall team in here to uh, take away any floating discs the furious might put up. Let's go, 
There's a nice edge. The wind's going to flatten it out. It's going to sit down back in. That'll work. Ten yards deep. Luxon gets it off to Grant in the middle. Cutting from a horizontal stacking position. Good movement. Okay, Woods got it on his backhand sideline. Doesn't have much happening. His only hope is to get it off to Grant. Grant reads it, makes the turn. His feet are in. Brilliant play. Great footwork, checked his space, knew what he could get. And they got it off the line in an instant. Crookshank finds it back across the field. Great reversing of the field there, Tina. They didn't stick on the line at all there. As soon as Grant got it with that great catch. I know, it was textbook. I also like to see Mike Grant did not try to wait for a second, wait for the big throw. Uh, he'd, he'd made a great, great grab and just needed to get it back to the middle and rely on his teammates to do the rest. Furious is up 10-9. Well, they needed that break. They answered Condor's break. Oh, wait. We have a discussion here of whether he was in. It's sort of irrelevant if the observer already called him actively in. They make active line calls. But I think what he's discussing is, did he run out of bounds, jump from out of bounds? Perhaps they're, uh, oh, the call is that he may have traveled or not put his pivot foot on the sideline. Since he went out of bounds after that catch, he's got to put his pivot foot on the sideline. Established position there as a thrower. And his defender, Mark, I believe, Yep, is discussing with him that, that Brian saying, yep, Brian Bogle, he's saying that he didn't establish his position, so it's a foot foul, in which case it's going to come back to Grant here. We're going to sort it out. Okay, I think the uh, situation here is the Condor player said that, well, Grant's saying he caught it, his body sailed out of bounds, but his feet were about a few feet in, so that's where he came back to place his pivot foot on the field of play. Condor player is saying that he needed to put his foot in this position exactly. I, I, perhaps he didn't have it where he thought he should. I think he thought he was out of bounds and should have put his foot on the sideline. Either way, they've sorted out where his position should have been. The goal does not count. The goal doesn't count, and it's coming back to Grant. It's all right, they're in a good position, albeit on the sideline. It's going to trap him hard. I have to assume here. Or is he going to go flat and force it back across the field? Yeah, he's going to, he's going to try to push him back into the field now that their defense has had a chance to set up. So Brian, Brian here is... Giving him a little sideline, but not a lot. There you go. Pushing him back. Grant does the right thing. Of course, looking back across the field. Crookshank has it. Kirk Savage fed him. And back to Savage. There's Derek, the young player. Lots of cutting, lots of choices. Not all of them are good ones. These guys are quickly assessing the situation. Derek hits. Is that Grant or lugs them? Yep, moving it across the middle. Ooh, did we have a turn or a foul? Looks like there's a foul called. The receiver was apparently contacted by the defender there and unable to hang on. So contested though, it goes back to the thrower. Quick release by Savage. Evans not quite in. But Crookshank is, but looks as though there's another call. Pick, perhaps? As you hear the players working it out, that it was so far away from the play, the pick that occurred, that it shouldn't matter. It didn't affect the play. The throw to the end zone to Crookshank. He was alone. Was he alone because his man was picked? 
That's what the Condors are contesting. I'm furious is saying no. He's too good. He got open on his own. He didn't need any help from a pick. Of course, that's what they're going to say, and we'll see what the observer has now been brought in, what he'll have to say. The wind's picking up, you can see. The wind's picking up. The heckling is moving into a next level from the sideline. Well, there's been no stoppage of play much in this game. There's been, if there's been a call, they've kept the game moving. So I think the crowd has been spoiled by such smooth action on the field and great play, but a good hard played, clean game. They don't want to see bogged down moments like this. All right, Hamcom checks it in. And Evan Wood feeds Brookshank again anyway. That was a tight spot to get that completion. And Furious goes up by one, 10 to nine. This is a game to 17. It's a great effort on D there. Diving defender, Brookshank just secured it though. There's definitely some, it helps you sometimes as a receiver in this game to get your body in front of somebody and seal them off, kind of like you're boxing somebody out in basketball. It's hard to get around you and get the block. If the pass is placed out in front where only you can reach it, defender's only choice is to come through you, and of course, that's not allowed. That'd be a foul for certain, so good receivers can seal you out. Okay, Condor's receiving a good pull. They kept this one in. Two passes off. Looks like a Bue has it. JD's looking around. Horizontal stacking. Constant movement. Wait for the poached receiver to break free. Burfine's looking for it and gets it. And they're working kind of a Plinko offense here, just trying to keep it moving against this squirrely D matching their squirrely cuts. Up line's not there. Late arriving swing, but defender was so far off. Oh, and a great foot. Or is it so great? But six foot five. Burfine gets it. Give and go back and forth. And that's the second upwind break this half for the Condors. Scores now nodded at tens. That was a great grab. He went up against two furious defenders. Came down with it, and again, you see it over and over, immediate, quick releases. Nothing fancy. They just zip it right into the end zone. Keep it, keeping it moving. All right, so. Furious set to receive with their starting offense. Husek pulls it, gives it a little less of an angle, aimed farther to the away sideline and kept it in. Alexander starts it. Savage is around the disc. But Lugsden gets it. He looks flick back to the backhand side. Mark Roberts kicks it back out. Nice movement, good low release. Firing to Grant, good backhand. Crookshank. Looking lefty flick. They're giving him that, but for a moment, Alexander and his defender took it away. But can Grant reel this in? No! Great effort, but that was getting pushed down by that wind. You can see by the edge that was up. That was a outside edge up, and the wind coming across the field was just beaten on that disc. He's gonna push it down in a hurry. It takes a lot of years, Tina, to, doesn't it, to develop a knowledge of what the disc is gonna do in the wind and what angle you have to give it, what you can get away with, how hard you have to throw it, how much spin. Absolutely. I, uh, always welcome when we have a windy practice, even though some of the kids may say, oh, I don't want to throw, it's too windy. An ultimate player who wants to get better, absolutely has to go and throw in the windiest conditions. Well, there we have it. They get it off the line with the first look. Condor player is point blocked, but there's a foul called. Looks like Brian. Mike Grant is, whoa, he's... He's applying pressure on the mark there. He's sure pushing in close. There's not a lot of disc space. You're supposed to give the diameter of the disc 
That's much space is supposed to separate you and who you're guarding. He's pushing it, but now he's backing out a little bit. But applying pressure, Brian gets it out of there. And they're running a very spread out, swirly, some horizontal cuts from downfield. I mean, cuts from a horizontal stack downfield. Say, great catch. Looks like Husak putting it up. Can the receiver keep to that? Oh, too much, a bit too much arm and still a bit too much wind. Usually a disc tends to slow down at the end of its flight. Even if that did it all, it wasn't enough to allow the receiver to make up ground. No matter how hard you train for acceleration, that's when you need it. You didn't have enough. It's also hard to read a disc that's coming in over your head. You're not allowed, it doesn't allow you to sprint as as fast as you can, and uh, that was going to be a tough catch. So Kirk Savage will run it up to the uh, flick sideline. Got a flat force, spreading things out, making him go spray the disc back and forth across the field. With no call by Derek, he wants to keep it moving. Grant gets the backhand off. There's Oscar Pottinger, the other young player from the 2000 Canadian National Juniors team. He's a stellar player. Mark Roberts has it now. Shows back in a couple times. Crookshank fakes up the line. Instead breaks back to Grant. Steps around, puts a flick. I think it's a lot more air than he intended. This one's going to be a jump ball. And Mark Roberts pulls it down. That was a great save for the pass that I'm sure Mike Grant would like to have back. As they moved it up the field very, very well, this pass goes up, and uh, luckily, Mark Roberts goes up first, gets in good position, sealed his defender from behind. He sealed him, went up first. That's what you're gonna have to do, and ripped it. That puts Furious up 11-10. That's Mike Grant's fifth assist and Roberts' fourth goal. Okay, so here is set to pull. Condor's got to look to break back. Nichols puts up the pull. About three yards deep. Irvine hits Dugan. Oh, great layout by a poach. And it's a turn. Furious has it quickly, looking quickly to score. It just as quickly look to get it off the line and reverse the field, but oh the poaching defenders oh. alert can the line hold it? No The wind was not gonna allow who's gonna stay in the air long enough a little float and Evan might have had a chance to pull that one in It was a good look however the uh, Condors collapsed on what they thought was the intended receiver There's plenty of space just a little bit too much edge on that disc And a few too many players collapsed it looked like well, they took a shot. Now the Condors, with Steve Dugan, approaching the line to put it in play. Looks like Savage is going to be on the mark. And that's Evan Wood. Gets it off to the middle, and the Steets continues. Reaches around and back for the flick, but that caught way too much air. Ooh, but the Condors, in a crowd, pull it down. Ouch. That's why those in the wind sometimes, no matter how well intended your throw is, even the best mechanics sometimes can overcome the wind or a slight change. So the disc bounces up a little higher, goes over the intended receiver, and now we've got a situation where several people converging from different angles. And you get situations like concussions can occur. Let's, hopefully, let's hope that didn't happen to JD on this one. It's definitely like a shot in the head from an elbow, perhaps, or a shoulder. And he's okay. And he quickly gets the ice bag. So J.D. will sub off 
If the Condors can bring on a player, well, definitely will have to bring on a player, this allows an opportunity for uh, Furious to match a substitution here. It could be anyone they want, take any one of their players, put a fresh one on the field to run hard D. Dugan, center, center field. It's about to back in. Another one hopped, but Burfine. Boy, it's up in the air forever, and he just stands there, and eventually everybody else comes back to the earth. Steets has it now, and it's out in front of space. There you go. Wow, Burfine just got that by virtue of being tall. Everybody else was jumping, jumping, jumping. Oh, it's going back. We've got a call. Grant didn't feel he was able to get a clean launch up for that disc. They're kind of laughing about it. Looks like they're going to work it out. But uh, Tommy looked like he was just standing there. Nobody else went up, and he just said, well, I'll, I'll wait for you guys to come down the disc, too, and I'll just catch it here. That goal is negated. As they work this out, they're, they're in the red zone, the Condors are, and... Uh, As they uh, set up here, a big upwind opportunity for them. When they don't want to squander, so. Funny thing about sometimes a call like this and a discussion takes a little bit of focus out of what you need to do when it gets checked back in. You, need, you only want the people there that have a say in the matter or need to. Your captain works it out or whoever's in play. Keep other people out, focused. What are they gonna do if this comes back in play? We saw this happen in the Masters final. Because it was so contentious, and there, were a, there was a proliferation of calls, particularly in the second half, I think it really took Olden and the way out of their game. And you can, you can blame a team for making too many calls, but considering where the sport is now, it's up to your team to not let it get under your skin. And perhaps only make calls when they're actually legitimate. Okay, we're gonna put it back in play here. Dugan has it. And there's still some discussion. He's got Evan Wood on the mark. And he's bouncing around trying to stay low. Dugan gets that backhand across the mark off. Back to, okay, Sidaris has it, got another foul on the mark. Another foul on the mark here. As they work this out, and we're set to get it started again. Sidaris gets a big backhand off. Puts it out in space in front of Steets. Not in, though. He's in bounds, but just outside the goal line. Quickly looks to throw back across the field to an open Dugan. There's the upwinder we were talking about, hoping they'd get. Now tied at 11. That was Brandon Steed's third assist and Steve Hugan's second goal, both of them in this half. Okay, we hate to see, uh, see it happen, but there's a possibility they might have to time cap this game to keep it within the time frame that the tournament had set up. You know, there's lots of reasons they might have to uh, time cap it. People have flights to catch. I know the UPA is going to want to have a appropriately long uh, award ceremony. There's uh, rental cars to return. So unfortunately, <laughs> even though the uh, rabid ultimate fans won't understand ending a game when it's sunny and there's a field, it's clearly uh, something they're going to have to do. Well. Here we go. Furious gets it off with Alexander starting it, receiving the pull. Got to Crookshank, back to Crookshank here. Some physical marking going on. He steps up and cranks a lefty flick an awful long ways in that breeze. It stalls out, and there's a play made on it by both the receiver and defender. Nothing called. Namkin picks it up. His first pass is hotly contested by Andrew Lugston. Nice break. Crookshank is forcing him sort of flat. Going with a flat force. 
Well, that pivot foot is really dragging there. He does get it off. But just beyond the outstretched hand of Taylor Casino. Oh, I think the defender has tweaked an ankle, perhaps. There was no travel called on that on that huck, Tina, but the pivot to the forehand side, then back to the backhand to give him momentum to get that throw off. I don't know if you noticed, but his foot went about a foot, at least a foot to the right when he pivoted the forehand. And then when he went back to the backhand, he went about two feet in the other way. His pivot foot was definitely dragging. Well, it's tough. You don't want to watch feet as a defender, but that did give him an advantage to get that around the flat mark. Although it was clearly uh, obvious that he did not want that throw. You know, he looked, he looked pained after he threw it. And once he hits 33 or beyond and plays the Masters, he'll never be able to get away with that throw again. Good point. All right, Furious is going to put it in play. Deep in their own zone and right in the corner. So Taylor's going to apply the mark here. Dugan gives him a word of advice. He's going to be in position to help the marker maneuver and be the eyes in the back of his head. Okay, a quick shot off the line. Now Nichols doesn't have a lot happening. It goes back across the field again. Well placed to Lugsden. It's a big receiver. It's nice to have big receivers. Grant gets it, looks up line to continue. So pass off to get it back towards center. Alexander getting down low. It's a very low release. Good effort on D there, but Grant secures the disc by going strong to it. And okay, we've got a foul on the mark. And one of the things that I like about both these teams is they give really genuine long cuts. And you have to go with them. You have to keep them honest. And as soon as they get them onto the other side, they'll come under. And they're off giving lots of options to Derek. And Drew sends it out to Grant. Got a flat mark who's nowhere near him yet, but he did stop to continue. That's effective. Nichols gets it in the middle. And Alexander, it's a good place to be. Again, working back and forth. It's about all that's working at this point, but I think we've had a pick call. Alexander has it about 10 yards out. Shaded slightly toward the flick side of the field. Decided that it was before the throw to him. So it goes back to Nichols. Even in better position of the middle. And he throws it right back to Derek Alexander. Steps around. Can't get that one off. Marking is really heating up. These guys are really making passes upfield difficult. Nichols has it again. Okay, you hear the call. No open side. But it's sort of a flat mark. What is the open side? That could be either on a flat mark. They're sort of shading to the backhand side now. They're choosing a side at the end zone, which is wise. And they're overplaying there. Did you notice, Tina, they were letting them go back and forth across the field, but when they got close enough, they could take one shot to the end zone and switch to a backhand force. Yep. If it was backhand before, it wasn't discernible. Okay, it's definitely a backhand force. Savage looks up. He hits Nichols. Doesn't have much happen. Tight spot. It's the backhand off. Grant comes screaming across. Beats the defender. The left winder. That puts Furious up 12-11. It was a great shot of that throw to the end zone. The disc was there hovering for a split second. The green background. And all of a sudden, Mike Grant zoomed into view. It's a beautiful example of throwing to space. Okay, Furious got the upwind break. There have been a lot more of those in the second half, Tina. Now they're pulling downwind. Gives them an advantage. Up 12-11. Can the Condors answer with a upwinder of their own? Yeah. It's getting into the twilight of the game. Wow, some hot 
action here. Looks like there was a foul. Perhaps a pick. Okay, look, JD has it. A shot to the head. Apparently didn't affect him. He throws one out in space. Woo, that was a dangerous, dangerous situation. You know, I've said this before, but the throw up the line where someone can poach in and get someone in their blind spot, spot is really dangerous. Looks like it was dangerous for Milner there as he's leaving the field. He walked off promptly and laid down on a it's like a massage table, trainer's table, and he seems to be in some pain. I wonder if there was a prior injury there. Okay, a timeout called on that. So, Furious will have the disc at about midfield. Chance to get a downwind break. If you notice the uh, starting seven of or the seven that's on the field for Furious is talking and the rest of the team is just forming a wall, trying to get the energy up, not getting involved in the call because there's no need to have 19 people discussing what to do. Conjures are doing the same thing. The Conjures pose is, appears to be a little bit more nervous or concerned. It's really hard to strike a balance between being up and being focused and confident and not going into the land of being goofy. Maybe this doesn't matter for these men, but certainly when you're coaching high school boys, I'm sure you have the same experiences I've had, Michael. Absolutely. But I see at all levels that sometimes a timeout is the right thing to do, but sometimes you come out flat after timeouts, just like after half. You have to practice coming out of those timeouts and stoppages of play, long lulls where you can kind of lose a little bit of intensity. Um, don't let it affect you in that way. You can practice that in your practice sessions. Call timeouts, put timeouts in your scrimmages, in your inter-squad scrimmages. Intra-squad scrimmages, pardon me. Well, let's see how Furious comes out after this one. Condors have got to stand strong here. Furious is on the dance floor, right at about brick, not far from the red zone. Okay, notice they set people far away from the line. Nobody's isolated over there. They want to just get some good movement and get it off the line. That's what they did. Right here at center field. Break, but it went straight to the defender. There was some his communication between the thrower and receiver there, he definitely was open. It almost looked like he could have caught that as well. Yeah, he didn't know it was coming. And John Frame kind of got frozen, maybe by a pivot or a fake, or took his eye off the thrower for a moment. And now Dugan's going to put it in play. Condor's got it back. they got to be happy with that. Sidaris has it. Second flick. He's talking to teammates. Switches to the lefty backhand instead of the short flick. Some people like that. Real short flicks are sometimes difficult for people. He's willing to use his lefty backhand for short breaks like that. And a little high release backhand. Okay, we got, a, got another call here, stopping play. I wonder if Sudaris covers that in his book. I'll have to read have to it and see. It. Okay, they've sorted this out. Bissack gets it off. JD's got it. High backhand to break the mark. I think we've had a pick, but it was in the air. So it stays with uh, James Sedaris. Okay, Wood is on the mark. Flat mark. I'm going to have to spray to the sides. Keeping it going. Steets has it now. Lateral cut from... Her find it appears. Ooh, trouble right in the crowd. I think Dugan was surprised that made it through the crowd untouched as it bounced off his hands. 
So have a discussion on the throw. Yeah, things are getting a little sloppy, a little cranky. Yep, and perhaps, like in the other games we've seen, certainly that Masters Third final, as they're getting tired, the it's a little harder to complete the passes. The marks perhaps get a little more physical because they're certainly knowing that the end of the game is near and they want to be on the top end of the score. Okay. They've sorted it out, Tina. And looks like there's no no call was ruled and uh, was indeed a turnover. Right at the goal line, Furious has the win at their back. Steve Dugan on the mark. A couple pump fakes. Okay, Allen gets the pass off. Back to Callen and they're working that sideline. Trying to get it off. Connors is doing a good job of keeping them in there. It's not a lot of space. Oh, we've had a call. Okay, look at how they've spaced things out with a L stack here. One cut up line. The other goes back for dump. And Condors are not giving everything up. Grant takes a shot up line. Completes it. Frame gets it off. Another stoppage of play. What's a call here, Tina? My guess it was some kind of pick. Uh, a lot of stoppage here. I... Might be that sometimes you have a couple turnovers. People are getting out of position. You got pick calls by... against your offense. Well, Wood has it now. First look to get it off the line. And here goes a big shot. Okay. Going toe to toe. Grant's out in front. Well, he goes up first, but he doesn't get it. No call. Or is there? Well, looks like looks like Husak doesn't agree. They're gonna discuss it. Uh, you know, I thought he went up early. Yep, I thought Grant misread it. Perhaps but, it hung a little longer than he thought it might. Or you know, maybe he was uh, Husak was on his back, hit his leg. Well, they graciously accept the call. Mike Grant does, that is, and. Uh, Usex pleased with the observer's ruling there, and they drop the disc appropriately right where it occurred, and Dugan will again walk it up. This very deliberate stride, tipping nothing. He could dart to the line in a second, but no, he's going to walk. There he goes, what did I tell you? <laughs> and, ooh, a big fake on that crank, but instead he breaks inside. Wow, crowded area, and again, oh, that's tough. Okay, oh, and a, wow. This Both these a, teams just need to settle. Here's a good time for a time. And a block comes out of nowhere from the post defender. Oh, boy. Ooh, that looked pretty clean to me. CJ Harmer came out of nowhere for the post block. Wow, he just shot from out of frame. For those of you viewing, for those of us here, and just catapulted across in front of the receiver. The intended receiver was Steve Dugan. He's claiming he had the disc in his hand and is a strip. But no, the ruling by the observer is that that was a clean block. Okay, that, that brings the number of turnovers on this point to six. Six turnovers. They're fighting hard here. Sometimes the points are ugly. Winning the ugly ones is just as important. Wow, another huge bid in the end zone. JD's not happy about the call if there is one. He's saying there's no foul. John Frame was the receiver. Okay. So they sort this one out. I notice as things are also more bottled up as we get near the end zone, it's just not all the big sweeping cuts in the space are diminished. You're running out of room, you're running out of options, and of course the defense has a say in the matter. They're going to the places where you don't have much room to go. They're trying to take everything away. 
So Tina, if, if they retain possession here, Furious, what do you like to see in this? They're all boxed up close. Yeah, they've got to, they got to go visit the back of the end zone, that corner, in the middle. Might be looking hammer. Nope. So they can hammer to Grant back there, but instead, much easier option present itself. And good to see these guys work out that call so quickly. That was a pretty painful point, though. Uh, Furious is now up 13 11. So they're holding serve downwind. The upwind points are hard to come by. They certainly were in the first half. They've been more plentiful in the second half. Okay, so Furious will put it in play with, try to close this out with their best, best defense. So again, we mentioned something about the cap, and at 13-11, we're not certain if they're going to put it on. The game is supposed to go to 17, but we may not get there if they decide to shorten this one up. And because there's been so much scoring, I don't, I don't have the watch on the game, but I wouldn't be surprised if we got the cap call pretty soon. And points have been long. Those flat marks, the spread Ds, junk things have, uh, you know, several more turnovers than I think these teams are normally happy putting up. Uh, and it's, it's, it's made it a longer game. Okay, so Furious pulls. They're hoping for an upwind break. Condor's going to try to hold serve coming down and uh, draw within one. Okay, Dugan gets the disc off. And the Steets, it's okay. It looks like there's a pick call. Okay, it's going to be put back in play. Well, we've got another violation. I think we're not, Condors are not happy with where the Furious fellas are, or the other way around. Somebody's out of position. Okay, as they check the disc back in. Got a backhand break. A lefty backhand. Hampton puts it up, a little high, but Sidaris is ready for it. We've had another, looks like some traffic problems here. It's getting cluttered. Okay, Savage is on the mark. Sudaris is being given his flick. Can he get a break? Throws a big fake in order to get a break off. It's a great way to get the fake off. They're moving it well. Good defense up front. I think we have some contact on the, between the receiver and the defender. A bit more than is allowed. Steeds has the disc. And they're, they're looking downfield to figure things out. It is interesting how these discussions get a bit longer, not just late in the game in a close game, but because it's late in the game. And four, well, there's the cap horn. So we know that following this point, well, the cap is going to be effectively on. It'll either be a gain of 15, or since that's what the game will be too, with the Condor scoring here. Is that correct, Tina? Yep, absolutely. Game's 13-12, game to 15. And I hear the boos of the crowd. They are not happy. You know, hundreds of people look forward to coming to Club, Na Club Nationals all year long. It's the last game of the tournament, still sunny and warm, and a lot of people don't want it to end. Well, we've got a 13-12 score. They want to see this played out to 17. There's still opportunities for the lead to, you know, change. Um, 
So we'll uh, we'll have to see. Now we know it's a game to 15, adding to the top score. So Furious has the win at their back to get one point closer to the UPA title. Condors are gonna need a big pull from Greg Husak here and hope to get an upwind break. There's the pull, great extension, tremendous strength. Is it gonna stay in bounds? It does, and it's several yards deep. It's a great pull, Tina. Good start on D for Condors. Yeah, I like that form on that. Who's that guy? Okay, Ludson is working hard. Grant finds him. And there we have a put out in front. There must be a call or else no chance of getting it. Oscar set up his cut well, but it's just too much on. I think there was a double move and he misread what Ludson was gonna do with the disc. Miscommunication there. Well, this gives an opportunity to the Condors to get the upwind break they need to tie the score. Pottinger on the mark. Okay, Grant's poaching off. Lusak trying to be a factor on other, other receivers. Big bid on D there. Come up a little bit short. Spreading things out. Trying to give their cutters more room to work with, but that, there's no room. There's plenty of room, but the receiver wasn't up to the task of covering the space. And Furious gets the score. Quick and easy score. Condors 12, Furious at game point. That's Lugsden's fourth goal of the game. Assist goes to Crookshank, I believe. Game point, Furious. Now the Condors have the win at their back, Tina. I mean, you just gotta think, take care of the disc here. We're not gonna give it up. We're gonna do what we should do on offense. We're gonna score. We have the help of the wind at our backs. Although it's been tricky sometimes, it's somewhat going across the field, but they should score, and uh, the tough thing is get through this point. We'll do that first, then right. think about the upwind break. Anyone on their team who's still angry about the cap is not going to be able to give it his all on the field. But they're, they're in the wrong time zone. They're not in the here and now. they got to be ready to perform at their best right now. Got their plan. Looks like Nichols will be pulling. Okay, the uh, observer's coming out and giving the team the information they need to know, probably in regards to their timeouts in, in cap. As they sort that out, team, this could be game point for Furious. It is game point for Furious. It could be over if they get the big upwind break. But this could come down. And it's going to be an exciting finish either way, but uh, I kind of figure that the Condor is going to be up to this. What do you think they're talking about? You think they're still talking to Cap? About the Cap? Well, I think timeouts here. They, they each have one in Cap. Uh, they need to make sure of what the situation is. They want to know. They don't want to make a careless mistake. And, and uh, they want to make sure all the players on the field are fully aware, and those off the field, to keep reminding them. I like how the Condors immediately got uh, about two discs on the field. Keep loose, not stand around grumbling, keep moving those muscles. I'm going to be stealing that idea for a long time out in the spring of 04. Yeah, as we noticed, they were sometimes tossing it between points. I'm glad you commented on that. Certainly, it's what you're about to be doing, so why, rather than standing there, why not start getting tuned up for what you're going to have to do in a moment? Some of them are even trotting around a little bit, so they're going to be ready to do it at full speed. There goes Nichols' pull. It's a good one. 
Cross field and staying in, or is it? Oh, it broke late and got pushed out. It's going to give the Condors an edge to start. The crowd is into this situation. You know, I have to say, when I look at the Furious and the Condor logos, I see those all around my high school. Young Ultimate players love to wear their favorite team. Okay, Studar starts it off by hitting Steets. Well, it looks like a, a call on the uh, pivot. Perhaps he was called for a travel. it out. Steets and Michael Enns. They've got it ready and here we go. Enns checks it in. Steets does the same thing. Hits the dump. Continue flick to the break side. You're forcing them flick here, Tina. We've got another stoppage of play. Sideline of each team's going up and down the field along with the action. Wins trying to help out. And the team that wins the sideline has a big advantage. Okay, they're giving the flick. They're leading the receivers. Defenders are working hard to take away that open side. Nice D there in the corner. Crossfield hammer. It's Helixing. Oh, and Anthem pulls it down, but he's saying he was pushed out. Frame was there late, and that crowd, well, that small crowd became a big crowd in a hurry. Sideline saying that's in. Folks in orange are showing up. They're prepared to make a decision here, or they'll be prepared to make a decision. The players can't work it out. I know, it's a hard one. Could have been pushed out. It was just so much body contact in that small piece of land. There's a lot of momentum going to the back line. How do you stop that? The observer system here, they're supposed to work it out as well as they can if they can't. Or at any moment in this process, they can agree to go to the receiver or one of the players can ask. The receiver makes a ruling. You have to replays on that will certainly show what happened. And the ruling is, but Namkun landed out regardless if there was any contact from John Frame. He may well have been heading out of bounds anyway. It was going to be difficult, as athletic as he is. Very agile in the air, as we've seen this game from him. And throughout the tournament, he couldn't quite right himself to get a foot down. So Nichols walks it up. Therese has a chance to get the upwind break to put the game away. Pass up the forehand side, back to Nichols. Wood has it. Okay, they're moving it well. Condors have got to step up. Be tight here. Stay on your man. Don't lose him. There's a poach there and lost his man. Pass out in front, too far. Oh, there's some contact there. There's bound to be a call. The coaching receiver definitely got there first, though. It's going to be tough to sort this one out. Let's see how efficiently they take care of it. I don't know. I think the fierce guy got fouled. Yeah, the reception was led a long ways. The wind was pushing it even more. But he definitely, it's hard to tell if he had a shot at it, but he definitely was, there was contact for certain. Well, he's ruled a turnover. Sidaris picks up. He's got Melner on the mark, gets it off. 
There's a big downwind flick. Huge layout oh, on D man. and offense. Holy cow. Yes, indeed. Ryan Yarborough laying out for that. Instead, C.J. Harmer laying huge for the block. Neither could get to it. Holy cow, indeed. Harry Carey would be proud of that play. So, back to uh, Furious on the line. Right in the corner. Got Nichols picking up. Doesn't have a whole lot. He's got to swing off the line. Good thing. Continuing. Getting it back out into favorable space. And Alan Cohen gets it up. Furious is looking to put it away here. The dump defender is double teaming on the thrower. It wasn't that last sequence, but they're keeping it moving. Okay, Milner has it. Ooh. A little bump on the mark from Sidaris. Okay, Milner has it. He's being trapped. Throwing fakes, trying to get it somewhere. Doesn't have much. He knows he, he has little time left. Gets it off. Gets it off to Cowan. Throws it back to Wood. In the middle, is that Savage? Oh, a little stumble. Nichols trying to draw got it foul. back. Pardon me, that was not Savage who threw it to him. That was Michael Land. So Savage has it now, and there's a foul on the mark, Tina. Uh, it looked like the mark was trying to draw the foul like in basketball. Okay, and Alan Nichols has the has the disc. Okay, so Yarborough's on the mark. They're wanting to position each of the participants where they should be prior to that call. Okay, Nichols is looking to put it in play. Dump tries to clear his man across. Nice switch there. He didn't give up much. He switched marks back across the field, keeping Nichols forced backhand. And he takes it, but he puts it into the ground without that pressure from the mark there. Oh, and Steve's Drops it, but I think there was a call prior to that. There's a call. Sidaris was supposedly fouled. Fouled by Milner. Rick and James are having a friendly discussion here about what they'll have for dinner after they finish this game. And let's see, it's a, it is a tough call, and they got a. Got to be willing to have those words, and you know, Melner saying, "I don't, I don't, I don't like sushi. I, I, I'd rather go to a steakhouse." Here comes the observer, being asked to intervene. Okay, Stadaris is holding fast. The observers are conferring. Were either of them in position to make a call? They'll find out who was. They give it to the Condors. Sedaris is ruled a foul. Okay. That's how it works sometimes, folks. Had to go with the observer. That's fine. And we're underway. Melner checks it in. Sedaris is looking. Everybody's offset to the right, to the left side. He goes break side across. He's fouled again on that one. Milner again disagrees. It wasn't much of a count to give up there. But if you threw that away without physical contact from Milner, I can understand Milner's position here, unless he figures he can contacted him well after the release of the play. He definitely was being aggressive on the mark and might have fallen on top of him after the release. Okay, he's checking it in. Sedaris is showing backhand. Quickly throws the backhand. Gets it off and uh, they're trying to keep it moving. And went the bog down. Ooh, lifted his pivot foot, but got it off the cross field with a big attempt for the back corner. No, no call on the play. It seems to me that they're just getting too anxious. 
There's been a lot of turns this point. Both teams need to just settle and do what they need to do. That disc sailed well out of bounds. It actually gives the players a moment to uh, get a break, but an alert observer has, is supposed to be armed, the head observer armed with an extra disc to uh, put another one in play. So they're able to get the disc moving. And Nichols does just that. Ooh, very close on D there. Great effort. Got it in the middle. A big crank up win. We got a cutter alone out in front of everything. And that the upwinder to Rick Melner to close it out. That was a huge upwind puck, Tina. Huge. It held a strong edge the entire way. Launched it from beyond the brick and behind the brick. That was a magnificent way to end the game for Furious. Melner at the receiving end of that. Furious closes it out, 15-12. It's their second win in a row. They've got back-to-back -back UPA club championships. Wow, that was something else. Great game, clean play, well-played game. The spirit was strong and sportsmanship high. These guys were respecting each other all throughout. Great effort by the Condors. You know, in so many of um, these plays and the defensive sets and the offensive choices can easily be used to teach the incoming generations of ultimate players about how to play the game at its highest level. The furious stats here, to give you a little bit of the background, Mike Grant, of course, had five assists, two goals. We're saying his name often, but Lugzin was a big part of things, too, with four scores. Teammate Mark Roberts had four as well, and Crookshank, three assists and a goal. The Condors, Brandon Steeds had a tremendous game with three assists and a goal, some strong D. Steve Dugan, as always, three scores. Condors never took the lead. Furious broke away from 3-3, took it to 6-3. Condors fought back after half, tied it at nines and then again at 11s, but Furious pulled out a two-point break. Got the upwinders and when they needed to, took it to 13-11. And uh, after that point, the cap went on at 13-12, but they got the final two, including an upwinder to close out the game. Furious was just a bit too much. What a game, Tina. You're absolutely right, Michael. And uh, as you know, we're going to be able to see these teams in person in August 2004. We're lucky enough to be selected as the coaches of the boys' U.S. junior national team, so we'll be flying with our team to Turku, Finland. And when we're not doing our best to win our own division's world championship, I'm sure we're going to be on the sideline watching these two teams play. And while I may not be going out on too much of a limb here, it's probably safe to say that uh, it's a good chance we'll see these two teams meet each other in the finals of the world championships. What a fantastic tournament, Tina. UPA did a fantastic job. The Florida weather was unbeatable, and it's been such a great weekend. It started on Thursday. It's been a long weekend for these teams, an extremely long weekend, but very rewarding, particularly for Mike Grant and his team, Furious George from Vancouver. Congratulations also go to the U.S. representative in the Open Division, the Santa Barbara Condors. Definitely want to thank the UPA, all of the organizers, the volunteers, Sarasota's Polo Club. It's beautiful here. The observers, all the participants from the 60 teams participating. There's a, this is a great event. I'm so glad we were able to take it in, Tina. And let's not forget the uh, companies that are associated with this fine event. We have Discraft and VC Ultimate as sponsors. And we'd also like to thank Bodhi Sackford Films. <laughs> Keep an eye out for stackmovie.com, a website that will give you more information about the production of this great film. So, so long from lovely Sarasota. For Tina Booth, I'm Michael Baccarini. Thanks for being here with us. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> hey, man, can you also grab this for me? Can you autograph that for me? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was awesome. Okay. Every yeah. 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 Hey, Ricky. Ricky. Yeah. 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 Man, I, I, I struggled. Like, I was struggling to get it going. It was hard, man. I was tired by the end. I think CJ's uh, bid, like, what was it? Quarters, yeah. Quarters of the way through the game, that was huge. The one, yeah, that we needed that huge. point. It was fucking, it was a grind. It was yeah. such a grind, so. Long, yeah, we're stoked. Yeah. All the matches so that we won now, so. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. I gotta find my wife and my kid now. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> After the books on Monday, though. <laughs> I look back at my seat, you guys are trying to get the desk, you're swinging it, it's like... You're so tired, too, you can tell. Oh, it was great, though. So but they were trying, you guys were able to swing oh, it, you know. keep it alive. Oh, yeah, awesome. Yeah. 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 Yep. 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 Like every time we got a back, I'm like, this is fun. Yeah. 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 Where do you go from here? Give her ultimate, man. Possible retirement, we'll see. Really? I'm 39 and uh, put a lot, a, lot of, a lot of miles on the body, so we'll see. See you next year. Seems a long time away. Thank you. Pretend you're happy. Number two. That's two. Hey guys, no beers. Hide your beers. I'll make you just set five beers for the photos, Mike. You don't take it. All right.